just know and I will tell you a story. As a child, she had lost both her parents in a dreadful accident. She was then raised by a grandmother who passed on to her in extraordinary benevolence, how to respect the earth, teaching her about the many cycles of nature and how to nourish a love for all life forms. In face with the planet's whispers, she initiated a granddaughter to the unseen, light-based energies, signs and omens. When Nell was only 14, illness took away her grandmother, and she was uprooted from the warmth of nature to the cold solitude of urban life. However, the bond between her and her grandmother kept resonating, an unyielding echo in eternity. As an adult, she was feeling that the world we lived in was doomed. Extreme pollution, thinly veiled slavery, industrialized farming, devastating lobbies, wars for raw materials, destruction of the living to profit capitalism. She embraced activism and civil disobedience, fighting body and soul against the injustice of our world.
She married at an early age, but being infertile, the inability to procreate ended up hurting the couple's relationship. Having lost so many loved ones already, the separation hurt Nell deeply. Broken, with nothing to lose, she got more involved in actions such as industrial sabotages or slaughterhouse rescues, putting, at times, her own life at risk. One night, during an action, something strange happened. As Nell and her activist friends were loading the truck that would take the animals from the abattoir to brighter days, a serial purple light took over the clouds. The moon became blood red and made the sky appear as spectacular as it was terrifying. The very same night, she had an incredibly powerful dream within which her deceased grandmother was strangely linked to this blood moon. Confused by this dream, she realized that phenomena just as strange had been happening around the world for months. All this echoed inside her like deja vu. At the same time, she felt an unbearable pain deep inside that wasn't hers. 
It was like the earth suffocating with human activity cried through her. The dream came back over and over incessantly. Fragments of the song her grandmother used to sing to her came back more precisely every night. She realized the song was much more than a lullaby, but was in fact a prophecy. The world was on the verge of upheaval of unknown proportions. Days of wrath are coming. Signs were undeniable. The earth was trying to warn those who could hear. He foretold that when all the signs would have appeared, it would be time to go to a very specific place where her grandmother used to take her. A cave atop the Shell Mountain and to remain there for precisely 33 days. As the signs started to show, she tried to warn her acquaintances, but no one took her seriously. Helpless, she resolved to hide in the cave alone. As soon as she settled down, the 
earth started to shake violently. She heard dreadful explosions and advanced further down the cave's protective womb. She started to meditate, resonating with the earth as the apocalypse raged outside. The spirit fused with the world's soul in ritual chants pleading for leniency. Nell was mourning at times, linked to the world's suffering. She felt that all this had a meaning, a meaning yet to be understood. Now was to play a crucial part. days left to wait. In a corner of the cave, under a pile of rocks, she discovered a little box. When she opened it, she found a letter and immediately recognized her grandmother's handwriting, along with a variety of seeds. On the 33rd day, she gathered her belongings, the box, and left. Now felt different in her body and in her mind, as if a door had opened inside her. Her perception had been modified. She could single out whispers of the wind and hear cries from the burned down tree's roots. Every time she passed roots, she perceived fragments of memories bound to them. She saw entire families perish in the flames, as if this terrible event were carved into the rubble. As far as her eyes could see, there was nothing but burned down forests, collapsed buildings and pillaged doors. Nell knew, deep down, that there were other survivors. She could almost hear their voices calling for her. Led by this newfound intuition, she walked incessantly until she met Raven and Neftis. Two young women who survived thanks to recurrent dreams for warning them of the days of wrath.
together the journey itself. The three of them found out that they didn't need to resort to speech anymore. They could communicate telepathically and understand each other through this new inner language. A deep friendship grew steadily in their hearts. They walked towards the mountains, gathering from the ruins everything that could be useful. They sometimes crossed paths of surviving animals who seemed to rebuild. Benefiting from freedom and space that were finally given back to them. The voices calling the three women became gradually clearer, and a few weeks later, they finally arrived with their intuitions that guided them all this time a survivor's camp. Every survivor had been warned of the days of wrath, either by dream, intuition, or prophecy. Together, they were to build a new world, respectful of the earth and all life forms. The tribe lived for some time gathering food from the surrounding ruins, then planted the first batch of seeds brought by Nell. She who couldn't give birth, freaking old life on the planet. Those were difficult times, especially early on, as the old world hadn't prepared them for this. Society had made them reliant and cut off from the most fundamental things. The community developed, little by little, 
thanks to the knowledge brought by the commerce arriving every month. Bound by their common desire to rebuild a new humanity, a humanity in harmony with the living, a humanity that would outgrow the mistakes from the past. Every night, their hearts beat together in a beautiful ritual of dances and chants. Exhausted, 
are collapsed. And when I regain consciousness, Nell was by my side, caring for me. I loved her with all my soul, as soon as I laid eyes on her. A year later, she became pregnant. It was a miracle. Like the earth, her body seemed to have been infertile to the sick world we used to live in. Giving birth was extremely complicated, as, to a great surprise, she bore twins. We symbolically named them Ada and Avon, as they were the first children of this new humanity. She was my friend, my wife, my soulmate, the love of my life. She was the spark of this new era. Rest in peace, my eternal.